Hi, I'm Sharon Bill. Welcome to my Theory Tuition series where I'll work with you step by step through each of the ABRSM theory grades. There are lots of resources available to help you on my website. If you go to SharonBill.com, you'll find some free PDF information sheets. They're available to download a new S letter or A4 and they accompany each step of this series. You'll find a page there with links to all of my YouTube video tutorials and you can also find out about the books that I have available. I've written an exam technique guide, how to take your ABRSM music theory exam. It's full of tips and techniques on how to best prepare for your exam and also how to make the best use of your time on exam day when you're actually working through your exam paper. So if you visit SharonBill.com you'll find it all there. If you can give me a like, that would be really super. And please do subscribe to my channel to keep updated. I have lots more in store. And now we're going to continue with the Grade 5 2014 Paper B. And we're going to look at Question 4. So if you turn with me to page 12, we can make a start on this section. So we have... Um, um, a fairly chunky extract here, a Schubert song, and then we're going to keep referring back to this and we're going to ha also have to annotate the score to show where our answers are in this little extract. So we're going to have to keep shuffling up and down and back and forth to this little extract here. So let's see what it is that we've got to do. I do recommend that you have a go of this on your own, first of all, it doesn't matter if you go wrong, you can just rub it out and try again. It's always better to learn by your mistakes. So I'm hoping you've done that and we can check through these together. So we're asked to mark clearly on the music the capital letter that refers to the question that we are answering, showing where we can find what they're asking us to look for here. So for example, question A asks us to find a tie in the right hand piano part. So we have the soprano voice part we have the piano part, the right hand at the top, left hand at the bottom. And so a tie in the right hand part of the piano part can be found here. So we've, we're to write a letter A or B or C as it were. And then we show that the answer can be found in bar 9. So they know exactly where we're going to be uh, directing them. So then, we need to now look for a bar in which all of the notes in that bar can be found in the key of C minor. This is um, question uh, B. So we need to just bear in mind what would we be looking for. So C minor has a key signature of B flats, E flats and A flats. Uh, so we need to be looking for some additional uh, flat signs because at the moment we have a key signature of nothing. It is possible that we could have a raised 6th or a raised 7th, so um, we may find that perhaps we don't have um, an A-flat or a B-flat, but there might be an E-flat that can't be explained. So let's just look for some additional um, flat signs that we can't quite account for. So sharp signs won't do because they aren't part of C minor. So none of that will do. Keep going, it must be somewhere. And here we are, this looks like a promising bar. We have an E flat here. We have an E flat here, we have an E flat here. There are no B's or A's to be flattened and so we can explain that E flat as part of C minor. And so we can write that this is um, the answer to B and we will say bar 10. So that's nicely dealt with. And so now we're going to be looking in the piano part and we're looking for three successive notes, so three notes next to each other that form part of a chromatic scale. Now I find it helpful to just um, visualise or sketch out a piano keyboard, even if you don't play piano, it's a good visual reference to make sure we've got those semitones. And again, what we're looking for is um, some um, accidentals. We're looking for some sharp signs or so on to just give us a clue that we're raising in semitones. Now, it's the piano part that we're looking for. 
And we're also looking for notes that are going to be going next door to each other. So these are far too spread apart, so they, there's no point looking there. Let's have a look in the piano part here. So now this looks promising. We've got lots of notes quite closely uh, together in step. So let's see what we've got here. We have an E, an F and an F sharp. So I reckon that's it. We have an E, an F and an F sharp. So we need to circle those E, F, F sharp. Alternatively, if you just carry on forwards, we've got an F, F sharp to G, and so F, F sharp to G. And we know that that's also acceptable, so it could also be that one there. Now it's the lower part of the bass part where all the stems are going down. It needs to be the same um, voice part, as it were, the bass line, all following in step. And so we'll put... Um, a C here or we could put a C here as well and so we could either just say bar 6 or if you've extended over the bar line you could say 6 to 7 either one of those would be acceptable now then in the soprano part we're looking for the submediate note in the key of A minor so first of all let's figure out what we're actually looking for so in A minor I'm just going to sketch out the degrees of the scale So there's an octave, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The submediant is note F. So we're looking for a note F in the soprano part. So this is the soprano part here. So I can't see any note F at the moment. It could be a low F or it could be a high F. None of which we can see yet. And yet, here we go. So in bar six, we see a note F. So if we mark that as answer D and we refer them to bar 6 here, we've done what was required of us. Now then we have a little bit of harmony now. So we need to describe the chords in the piano part marked X and Y. So we're looking at X and Y. We're told that we're in the key of A minor. We're looking for chords 1, 2, 4 and 5. So I'm just going to sketch out what it is we're actually looking for first of all. 1, 2, 4 and 5. So if we're in A minor, the root is A. The second is B. C, D is 4th. E is 5. And now we build up the triad. So the 1st, the 3rd and the 5th. A, C, E, and there's a little double check. There's the fifth, which forms the basis of chord five. So we can just check we've not gone wrong. So first, third, fifth. And then there we go. Now remember in A minor, we raise the seventh. And so we'll be looking for a G sharp there. That always comes in the middle of chord five. Now we need to also show what position, what inversion the chord is in. So there's our bass note, first inversion, second inversion. So let's have a look what notes we've got. So chord X we have an F, a D, an A, a D and an A. And so all of those notes form part of chord 4. So chord 4 will um, answer that. So that's the first part completed. Now we need to say which position that's in. So our root note is an F. Sorry, our base note is an F. And so we can see that that's the middle of the chord. It's position B. It's the first inversion. So because we have an F in the base, it's a 4B. So let's look at this next one. So where's chord Y? Here we go. Now a massive clue is we have a G sharp. So straight away that tells us we're probably looking for chord 5 that's got the raised 7th in it. But let's double check. We have an E, a B, a G sharp, B, E. Yep, definitely chord 5. And then we just need to comment on what the bass note is. We have an E in the bass 
and so it's in root position so we could say 5a there we go so uh, keeping this page handy just as we're going to refer back to it we move on to the next section now here we have um, some performance directions and some um, German musical terms now in the exam from 2018 onwards this will be presented to you in multiple choice format however I suggest that you just um, crack on and give this its full definition because it's just great revision to do that because remember all of these performance terms and musical directions are built up from everything you've learned in grades 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. We now have Italian, French and German as well as a vast amount of these articulation marks. So um, a bit of revision is in order. I find it helpful to group these thematically rather than alphabetically uh, collating all the terms that are like in principle from all of the grades. So Langsam is slow so you would group that with um, say words from your grade one which are adagio, lento and later grades we come up with grave whatever makes sense to you, you could even colour code it just to help you to remember those okay so this one we first came across in grade one that's an accent mark there we go now then, we're asked to rewrite the last left-hand note of the extract. We need it to be exactly the same pitch, but we're changing to tenor clef. So tenor clef is slightly uh, higher up because this second from the top line is our middle C. And that's our reference point to make sure we don't end up an octave out. Keep middle C as your anchor point. So now let's look at the left-hand note. The last left hand note of the extract is this D. Now this is the D below middle C. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven down from middle C. So here is middle C. C, B, A, G, F, E, D is this one here. So that's the only way we can answer that correctly without getting our octaves uh, wrong and then we're not exactly at the same pitch so there we go that's that one done now we need to look at the time signature and we need to say if it's simple or compound time duple triple or quadruple simple time is in groups of two compound time is in groups of three there are two beats per bar three beats per bar or four beats per bar so let's see what we've got so we're in 6-8 and we can see straight away we're in compound time, we're in groups of three. There are two groups of three. So we're in compound time, two beats per bar and so it's duple. So that's soon sorted, compound time and it's duple. There we go, next one. We need to write as a brieve or a double whole note the enharmonic equivalent of the second soprano note of the extract. So enharmonic is when it sounds the same but it's written on a different uh, place on the stave. I find it helpful to have uh, the piano keyboard just to visualise here again. So we're looking for the second soprano note of the ex extract. So here is the soprano part, here's the second note and that's the B above middle C and so if we just look at that the B above middle C we could call that C flat or we could also call it A double sharp just being careful to get that pitch correct so if this was the note we were referring to this would be the C flat or alternatively this would be the A double sharp either one of those will do let's carry on so just a little bit of general information now this uh, is a song written for soprano which is the highest voice in uh, the voice parts so give the name of the voice part which lies between soprano and alto 
in the vocal range. Now, if you've got my PDF, you should have that information to hand. Uh, that's the mezzo-soprano. If you think about it, mezzo uh, kind of means middle, or like we have mezzo forte, or moderate, or medium. And so medium or middle soprano kind of makes sense. Oops. So there we go. A little bit more orchestral information to come. So we need to name a standard orchestral instrument that could play the soprano part of the extract so that it sounds at the same pitch and then we need to state which family it belongs to. So we're looking for an instrument that can play comfortably in this treble clef register. So it depends. If you're choosing strings then the answer would have to be uh, the violin. If we're choosing um, woodwind, any one of these will do, we'd have to choose either flute, that's a treble woodwind instrument, or it could be oboe, or it could be clarinet, any one of those would be comfortable in that register. Now then, uh, if you choose brass, Really, the high one for that would be trumpet. So plenty of options there. Now, depending what you've chosen here, will depend what you now give for this last question. We've got to choose a different family, and we need to now state its lowest sounding member. So whatever you've chosen here, make sure you've chosen a different family. So if you've chosen strings, you can't now choose that one. However, I'll give you the options. We have, if we're choosing brass, the lowest sounding member is the tuba, or you could even say the bass tuba, that's even lower. Uh, it isn't always present, but it's an acceptable answer. If we're choosing strings as a different uh, instrumental group, then um, the lowest sounding member of that would be the double bass. Um, and if you haven't chosen woodwind here and we choose woodwind here, uh, the bassoon is the lowest of that family. Or again, you could choose the bass. Oh, sorry, not the bass, the double bassoon. What am I thinking? It's the double bassoon. Again, that's not always evident in the orchestra, but that's an acceptable answer. So there we go. Double bassoon. So lots of options there. That's that question completed. We'll look at the next question in the next video. I do hope that's helpful to you. I hope that you're getting to grips with this subject. I also hope that you're enjoying working through it. I certainly am. If you can give me a like, that would be really great. And please do subscribe to my channel to keep updated. Please also do visit my website. Go to SharonBill.com and have a good browse around all the resource and information that's available to help you there. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.